Hello, my name is Ian. I'm one of the Sage 200 Support Team Technicians. Welcome to the third and final video on our Power Automator demonstration. Today, we're going to look at implementing and editing the demonstration flows we provided. We'll take a look at the work required to be carried out before uploading one of our demonstration flows. I'll then take you through a demonstration of how to upload the flow to Power Automate and how to get it to run. Finally, we'll look at editing one of the existing flows to get you started to create your own automated processes. So to recap where we're at from the last video, we just ran the get sites test from the Sage 200 custom connector to return the site ID and the company ID information that we then saved to our notepad file here, along with our client ID, secret key, and subscription key. To get to this point, we need to have onboarded our Office 365 tenant and set up the API. There are videos on how to go about this. If you haven't done this yet, please go back and watch the relevant videos, depending on whether you are a Sage 200 standard customer or you're a Sage 200 professional customer. Once the API was enabled, we've gone through creating the Azure application for Power Automate, and we've also created this custom connector. Again, there are more videos on this, so please go back and watch those if you haven't done so already. Before you get started, you'll need to make sure you know exactly where the demonstration flows are. Now, they were part of the download file that we downloaded previously. So for me, mine will be in my downloads folder under Sage 200 R1 flows. I've got the choice of two flows. I've got the purchase requisition email flow or the supplier bank email flow. Just to quickly explain what each one of those does, the purchase requisition flow will notify the authorizer when there is a purchase requisition ready to be authorized within the Sage 200 system. The supplier bank email flow will notify all administrative users of when there have been bank detail changes for your suppliers within Sage 200. That will then point you to the audit log to show you what those details were that have been changed. So once you've got all this information and you know where your flows are, it's time to get these flows uploaded and get them into action. So what we'll do is we'll go into my flows on the left hand side and we'll choose the import option at the top. When this page is loaded, click on upload. And what we'll do is we'll have a look for our flows. So what I'll be doing is I'll be using the supplier bank email flow. So again, previously I had said it's very important you don't unzip this file and you should see the zip folder available. So you highlight it and then click open. And you can see here that Microsoft's currently working away on uploading our package to the Flow website. It should take a moment or two to complete. Once that's uploaded, you'll be greeted with our import package screen. Now here, this will tell you that this flow is brand new and this is gonna be a newly created flow. So what we'll need to do is we'll actually need to specify the related resources in here. So to do that, on each section, you click on this little spanner or little wrench icon on the right hand side. And what you'll see is, is you'll see for certain elements of this, it'll automatically detect that a connector is being created there are some that you will have to create, but we will go through those in a moment. So for the Sage 200 Custom Connector, you click on the Sage 200 Custom Connector and then click Save. And then you'll see each step, it'll turn a gray cross to specify that step's already been completed. When they've all been completed, your import button will appear at the bottom right, bottom right hand corner. So for the next one, the Sage 200 Custom Connector connection, you need to click on the wrench icon and you can see that that is our custom connector. So that will be the Azure Active Directory connector that we created. What we'll need to do next, we'll need to do the Sage 200 custom connector connection. Click on the wrench icon and that'll be the custom connector that we created moments ago. So if you click on that and then click save. Next will be the Outlook connection. This one is slightly different. So you'll have to click on configure. Notice how there's no existing connections in here. What we'll need to do is click on create new, which opens a new page. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on new connection. So the best thing to do here 
is in the search box in the top right hand corner just type in outlook and you'll see you've got office 365 outlook that's the connector it's looking for don't choose any others because it won't work so we'll click on create what it'll do is it'll just ask you to sign in using your office 365 credentials and you can see the connector has been created in here so what we'll do is we'll just close that tab we'll refresh the list and you'll see there's my email connection so i can click on save lastly we've got the notifications icon so again click on configure this has never been created before so we can click on create new and then click on new connection now importantly type in notifications in the top right hand corner and what you're looking for is just this microsoft notifications option here click on the plus and it'll create that and you'll see it appears in your list again these connectors are saved so if you do having to create a new flow or you upload the purchase requisition flow you won't have to go through the process of creating these connectors again they'll just be there ready for you to click on and to select so we'll jump back in here click on refresh list click on notifications then click save you'll see that now we've specified all the resources we'll be able to click on import click on import what microsoft's now doing is actually validating the package validating the connections and that'll take a moment or two to go through once that's been successfully uploaded you'll get this message to say that all package resources were successfully imported if there are any problems on this screen microsoft will tell you they'll also tell you how to resolve that so you'll need to go back and fix those issues that may appear what we can do now it's been successfully created is click on this open flow button what this then does this then loads the flow and the steps that are required as part of that flow and how it actually builds the query using the api to then return the information and return the action that you want to specify so you'll see the supplier bank detail flow is set to run every 15 minutes you can come in here click on the ellipsis button go to settings You'll see that this is set to run every 15 minutes what you can do is you can click on that timer and you can choose your frequency so it can be as quick as every second or as long as every month it's entirely up to you i'll just be leaving this as every 15 minutes the next three things we'll need to look at are the initialized subscription key initialized site id and initialized company id now make sure that you've got your notepad to hand because we'll need the information that was previously given to us in the other steps so again you just click on the header for initialize subscription key and what i'll do is i'll just copy my subscription key out of there and pop that in there we'll just do the exact same for site id and we'll just do the same for company id now because it's one it's nice to all that information we'll put in will create a request header for the API to go and retrieve that information and then come back through and actually action what's going on in this get company details section here and get pending emails so what we'll do next is we'll just save the flow and once the flow is saved you'll get this green banner at the top that says your flow is ready to go we recommend you test it so to test the flow what we'll have to do is we'll have to go to my flows on the left hand side click on our supplier bank deals flow by default when a flow is created it'll be disabled so what we'll need to do is we'll need to turn it on and enable it to start the flow running now what we can do is we can click on run at the top here if we click on run flow what that'll then do is that'll just show us that the row the run has successfully started and the monitor will go to the flow runs page so we'll just click on done and we'll see here that we've got a 28 day run history and this will show us all the runs that we've ever done so what we'll do is we'll just refresh them what you're looking for is you're looking for that succeeded message so what you can do if you want to view what happened in that run you can click on the date and time that run was executed I'll tell you the flows run successfully and it'll tell you what steps it's actually gone through 
Now, because I haven't actually amended anything in Sage 200 yet, I won't have received an email. So what I'll do now is I'll just go into Sage 200, I'll amend some supplier bank details, and now I'll rerun the flow again. So I've gone through the process of amending a supplier account in Sage 200 and just adding some bank details to the demonstration data. I've come back into the flow website and just resubmitted the flow to run. And as you can see, this is what a successful flow would look like. So in each record retrieved, send an email and remove the record. And this is the email that I've sent myself. And that's what happens when the flow runs successfully. If the flow fails to run or you get an error message, an error will be sent to the email address that the email is being sent from. So in my case, it will be my admin at UKI test Briley email address stating that there are reasons why the flow has failed to run. What you can do is you can come in here to find out exactly why the flow has failed to run in the 28 day run history. You can choose the flow that it failed on and then you can go back in and have a look and diagnose what the problem would be. So the last part of this video, what we'll do is we'll be looking at editing the existing demonstration flow to start you on your way, creating your own flows and processes to help automate your processes within Sage 200. So to begin, you'll need to be logged into the flow website and you'll need to be under my flows where we've previously uploaded the demonstration supplier bank details flow. What we'll need to do is click on more commands and then save as, and this will ask us to create a copy of the flow you can give it your own title. I'll just be giving it purchase order authorization flow. And then just click save. And what that does is that actually saves a copy of the flow for us to then go in and edit. So to start editing the flow, click on the little pencil icon to edit it. And in here, you'll see the exact replication of the flow that we've just ran previously and tested and we know it works. So to begin editing the flow, what we'll need to do is we'll need to remove some irrelevant steps from this process. So what we can do is we can remove the last step and you'll do that by clicking on the three little buttons and then click on delete. And that'll just get you to confirm that you want to delete that step, which you can do. Now, we always recommend leaving the error handling notify admin of get failure to make sure that you do have some error handling Otherwise, the flow will just continue running. You will be receiving email notifications. You'll be wondering what's going on. So at least you've got some sort of error report in there. What we'd also recommend is leaving the initialized subscription key, site ID, company ID, and company name variables at the top. The reason being is these are dynamic variables that we're pulling in. This forms part of the get request that we'll be sending as part of the flow. What we'll also do is we'll get rid of the get pending emails. We don't want that in there because what we want to do is we actually want to change the action that's going to be created at this point. So we'll just delete that. Now to add a new step in, you'll see there's a little plus sign between the arrows. You click on plus and insert a new step and then we'll add an action. What you'll then see is you'll then see all of the custom connectors that are associated with Microsoft Flow. This isn't just Sage's custom connectors. These are Microsoft custom connectors. There's third party custom connectors in there. There is a lot of powerful tools that you can use as part of this, but because we're focusing on Sage 200, we're just going to look at our connector. So we'll go to custom, and then you'll see that's the Sage 200 custom connector. So this is actually the Swagger file that we uploaded previously. So you'll click on the custom connector, and what you'll see is you'll then see a list of actions that have been uploaded as part of that custom connector that was done previously. What we're going to do we want to return all purchase orders because in this scenario, we'd be looking at creating a flow and notify the authorizer that purchase orders are there to be authorized if you had that turned on. So we'll click on get pop orders. What it'll then do is like then get you to set some variables. In this instance, it's important to remember that you shouldn't have deleted the dynamic variables from before. And what you can do is you can just auto populate them. So we can pick the subscription key up the site ID up, the company ID up. So to make sure that works, what we'll do at this point is we'll save the flow. We'll then go back. Now, by default, when you copy flows, they are turned off, so you will have to turn this back on. So we'll turn that on, and then we'll click Run. On the right-hand side, you'll get the option to run the flow, and they'll tell you the flow runs started successfully. 
And you can see at the bottom here, there is the run history. So we can just refresh that page to show that the flow's run. And you'll see that this flow has been successful. So we've received all the orders. And what this has done is this has just put all the order information from the purchase order endpoint into a JSON file that we can then download and view. So you see here, it does look a little bit messy, but these are all of the orders that you'll have in your Sage 200 system. Now, all the information on the endpoint and the data that's received or returned by a GET request can be found on the website listed below. You can have a look at that, and that will then help you build in your logical operators and whatever else you want to do within Flow to send out emails to authorizers or anything like that. What we'd recommend doing as well, we'd recommend looking at the help files for Power Automate. We in technical support and developer support wouldn't actually support anything past the implementation of the flow. We've created this little snippet just as a, a goodwill gesture and just as a little pointer to get people started, something we have been asked for quite a lot. So that concludes this video on Microsoft Power Automate, setting up the demonstration flow and editing them. What you can have a look at next is you can look at how to query the API using Postman or other third party tools. They'll be provided by our developer support team, as well as setting up and using Microsoft Power BI. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it useful.